Welcome to another episode of Do -do 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 Blessings Astrology. That was just a hint right there. Good morning. Um, this is morning here. And Uranus is what we're going to talk about. Your anus. Your anus. Um, this is where you, you already see how I talk. That's Uranus as well. I have Mercury and Uranus conjunction in my chart. Um, so Uranus is where we do things that are weird. Weird because it is about sudden changes. It is about, it is the ch it is the, it's referred to as the earth shaker. If you ever, if you have ever watched um, uh, uh, Sailor Moon, Japanese anime thingy, you know Sailor Uranus? She goes, ah, it's shaking. <laughs> so basically, anything that's weird and just uh, Unusual, sudden. It's also about speed in a way, sort of. Yeah, getting things moving fast. Yeah, that's why it's associated with the ruler of Aquarius. Sudden changes, social upheavals. Um, what do you call that? Um, revolutions. You know, social changes, any sort of change in one's life. It is a collective energy, it's generational, because it takes a while for Uranus to travel from one side to the other. But not as long as like Neptune or even Pluto, or even after Aries is probably quite long. <laughs> and of course, the further the planet, because you know, that's how it is, right? It's just, it's just, it's just physics, it's just measurements. Farther away from the sun, the longer the the longer the or uh, revolution. Anyways, the point is it's longer and it's sudden. It's unexpected. Um, so as I make food, this is for later. So Uranus is all about that stuff. So when it goes through the signs, it's mixed. It's more about the houses, really, but yeah, similar. So anyways, so Uranus in Aries, you do things with leadership that are unusual, very curious about things you um, a lot to, you're probably like physically like unusual like you look strange probably this is the first house as well there's something to do with the body there's unusual things going on with the body um and your health as well there's unusualness about it there's also nervousness around the physical body and how you uh, approach the world and how you are Especially when you're probably younger, but that's more with the first house stuff, like birth when you were younger. That's um, I'm gonna cut that short because Uranus is really about that. Think about anything that's Aries, and it's all about unusual stuff. Um, I would say because of all that stuff, you have a different approach to life itself. The way you talk to people, the way you see yourself as well as an individual, or you put yourself in out there, your identity, you have an unusual identity. Um, not so much like the ego itself, but kind of. Yeah, but definitely an unusual way of presenting yourself. Uranus and Taurus, which is where it is currently, right now. Oops. See, nervous energy. There's a lot of like, un it's chaos, <laughs> right? Just like uh, any sort of like the 
transpersonal planets. What is it called? Transpersonal planets? Yeah. They're, they have something unusual about them. Always. Um, when I say unusual, I mean like we're not used to it as typical humans. Okay. So Uranus in Taurus is unusual things when it comes to self-worth. Uh, your mm, things that you get, you probably get different. <laughs> you probably get uh, your sources or your resources, money, all that stuff from different places. Um, find a few things unusually when it comes to how you um, view things, like what you value as well. So, so it's almost like you're not really that much earthbound. Pleasure becomes sort of, uh, you get into weird things with pleasure. You get into weird things with um, even relationships as well. Right? Uranus and Taurus is uh, possessions become like things that you go for, like little trinkets you have, things that you probably get, buy, or that you get receive as a gift. Those are just unusual, like the alien stuff. <laughs> um, how you spend your money is also kind of similar to that. Like it's very just unusual. Okay, and there's also sudden changes. Probably like you lose things suddenly, and you're like, <laughs> or you gain things suddenly, or whatever. The thing is, the flow is energy. The flow of energy is nervousness. There's un always unexpected things. You don't know what to expect. It lacks consistency, or rather, it's meant to be inconsistent. It's meant to be always about changing, changing, changing. Right? That's Uranus. So, Uranus in Gem, Uranus in Gemini. This is where communication becomes like. It's similar to what I do, how I talk, typically, <laughs> but. There is a bit of insight to it, but because it's not really about Mercury, it's not about the mind itself, it's just in terms of how you communicate in this unusual, uh, unusual relationship with your siblings as well, probably. Anything to do with that sort of one-to-one -one partnership, double, blah, this kind of thing. It's um, like we know what we're talking about when it comes to people who have mercury Uranus conjunction. I think we just know what we're talking about. Um, Mine was in Scorpio, so it's an exalt. It's, Uranus is exalted in Scorpio, so yay! Talk about that later. Uh, so yeah, Uranus then Cancer is definitely unusual things with your ancestry, your DNA, your home, um, what you do things for yourself. Your inner sense of self, uh, your emotions kind of like become. Similar, like there's a lot of nervousness in your emotion as well. You feel things a little differently. Um, because it's in Cancer, of course, you have to look at the moon. Anytime you, a planet, you know, you know this, right? I already mentioned this. Every time you go to, every time a planet has this thing in the sign, you have to look at the ruling planet of that sign and it gives it sort of that color, makes it sort of different. What is it? It's related, there's a link. You always have to look at astrology as a whole. Instead of just like one little part, you know, just like life. So, um, there's also a bit of you know, coldness to these emotions when it comes to anything Uranus in uh, the water signs. Emotions and those kind of things become less about emotions, more about the technicality of it. It's like the, it's almost like the emotions are expressed in a very sort of. Uh, it's kind of like, it's expressed, but it's not emotion. It's kind of like, there's a recognition of the emotion that goes, whoosh, and then that's uranium. Uranium has a tendency to be somewhat like Neptune, like you know, the Piscean thing, like a loop, more like distant, because that's what it is. It's all about 
changes and changes for the for the for the, the bigger picture. And it sees the whole picture. It sees what can happen. That's your Uranus. Uranus is a part of us. It's part of the psyche that wants to change. I totally forgot to put garlic in this one. <laughs> mm. Forgetfulness might be kind of a thing. It's more like not forgetfulness, but like things put aside because of all that nervous energy. So anyways, yeah, so Uranus and Cancer is the usual things with your ancestry. You probably picked up things in your home. That was quite different. If it's in the fourth house, of course, it's slightly different from just Cancer. Very similar though. Uranus and Leo. Oh, this is um, where life just becomes really unusual. Your sense of identity, what you identify with is your side. It's actually, it's actually in its fall. Well, no, no, it's in its detriment because Uranus is in Aquarius. It's home to it's home in Aquarius, and it's in dignity in Aquarius. So the opposite sign is its detriment. Um, I forgot to mention that because it, if it were in Taurus, which is its fall, because Uranus is in exact, its Uranus is this in its rise or exaltation in. Scorpio, so it's opposite sign Taurus. So there's kind of like a dullness to Uranus when it comes to when it goes into Taurus. It's almost like what? What? It actually brings down the Uranian sort of energy a little bit, grounds it a lot more because it's in it's in in, in Taurus, and that's what's happening right now because Uranus is in Taurus. Especially, I think it's been around here, been around her like in Taurus for the past. I don't know. I think it's going to be around for a while. I don't know. I don't really know. I have to look at my ephemeris. By the way, ephemeris is a book where you can tell, where they show you astronomical data. Not purely astronomical data, but how long Uranus is in that sign. So it's not really astronomical. But um, if I don't focus here, I'm going to chop my finger off. So anyways, um, Yeah, so it's a little, it's dulled down, so to speak. You know, you know, it's an earth thing. Earth, earth is very practical. So to a Uranian energy, it feels kind of like, yeah, you're so dull. So it's not really dull. It's just that. So all the gifts that we can find here with uh, Uranus, uh, with Uranus, is that. You work with the you work with that nervous energy, and you kind of what happens is you need, you need to accept that things are unpredictable. So in a way, Uranus actually kind of in a way is opposite of the Sun, where the Sun wants to control things, and Uranus wants to show life isn't about control; it's about letting go. In a way, it's very close to Neptune that way, where it's letting go. Because you never know what to expect in life, and that's okay, right? Because life is like that. Life is change. Uranus represents change, not inner core change like Pluto. Pluto is very, very much inner core change because it wants to get to the truth of things. It wants to be genuine. It wants. To, it's part of our psyche that wants to kind of like, what's what's all this? Right? What's all this? Look at, we have to look at the source of things, right? That's part of that Plutonian energy over here about Uranus. So Uranus is, Uranus in Leo is the opposite of Aquarius. So life itself becomes like this unusual thing. Um, 